Would everyone please be seated? Good morning. Holy cow, it's a packed house in here. You couldn't, like, skip chapel this morning, right? That would have made it a little less stressful for me. I'm actually really, really excited about having a chance to speak with all of you today. This is actually the start of my 19th year teaching at Appleby. So I know none of you were even born when I started teaching here. Teachers, don't kid yourselves. You're already really old. You were, you were, you're long in the tooth. But these guys weren't even a part of the world yet when I started teaching here. And uh, in that time, in those 18 years, because this is my 19th year, I've had a chance to see phenomenal collection of chapel speeches. Okay, so let's do some math on this. Let's say there's 22 chapel speeches a year times 18 years. I'm an art teacher. Does somebody want to give me a hand here? Anyone, anyone? 22 times 18? Oh my God, are you all going to graduate from Appleby right now? Or I think that somebody, did I hear it? Somebody? 396 chapel speeches I've seen. That's unbelievable. It, it's a little stressful for me, and I think it's going to be quite tough for me to come up with something. Hype! Where's, where's Isaac? Did I get that word right? Okay, I'm desperate to be cool. I know, I know. Thanks, Isaac. <laughs> um, okay, so to be honest, though, um, I've been amazed at the impact that the messages from these chapel speeches can have on all of us as individuals, as well as the total community here. Today, though, my hope is that all of you are going to make a difference when you leave chapel today, all of you, teachers and students alike. So I figure... Why well, set little goals, right? Go big or go home. So let's see if I can pull this off. Um, I bet you're all wondering what the post-it notes and pencils are for. Mrs. Sampson already asked me if I'm going to judge her by the color she sits in front of. What color are you in front of, Mrs. Sampson? Light blue. Light blue. Nice. No, no judgment call at all. Apple, good Appleby spirit, light blue. Um, I'm going to tell you what those are for later. You can, you can keep trying to guess. No, it's not an art test, although that would be good. Um, okay, so who can tell me what holiday is coming up this weekend? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yes. I love Thanksgiving. I put on my fat pants and I eat turkey and everything pumpkin until I'm in a food coma. It's time for family, for friends, for food, fun, and Netflix. Not necessarily in that order. It's also a time to think about what you're thankful for. So I'm thankful for chocolate. For tulips, the smell of fresh coffee brewing first thing in the morning. I'm thankful for freshly flooded ice and a sharp pair of skates. Slightly less thankful for the stinky smell of my shin pads and gloves, though. I'm thankful that even though I have a horrible voice, where's Maddie Harrison? We talk about our man voices, but I have a horrible voice. <laughs> We're good with it. We like our man voices. Um, that uh, that we still can sing every time we're in, cha in chapel because the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Um, I'm thankful for my husband, George, who unfortunately wanted to be here but couldn't because he's saving the world from bad people at the moment. Um, but he's my best friend and he makes me the best possible person that I can be. Okay. I digress a little here. And those of you that have me for a teacher know that how easy it is for me to get off on a tangent, right? So here's a little MHLT. That's a Miss Heggie life tip. Surround yourself with people that make you a better person. Don't waste your time with those that make you feel bad about yourself. Be with those that make you the best you you can be. Okay, back to my thankful list. I'm thankful for my cat, Ed. She's the one I... Ed, I know, don't ask. She's the one that I rehearsed this with. She groomed herself the whole way through my rehearsal. I'm taking that as a good sign. Um, I'm thankful for my dog, Rush. And I'm thankful that both of them helped me lower my blood pressure after a long day of working at Appleby. Uh, I'm thankful for a great pair of shoes. I'm also thankful for the color green and even more thankful when they come all rolled into one. <laughs> That's a good thing. 
Uh, I'm thankful for a smile or a hug or, when he, or many of uh, small kindnesses that can turn my day from bad to great in a heartbeat. And I'm especially thankful for my friends who make me laugh when I'm sad or taking myself too seriously. Believe it or not, I'm also thankful that I get to hang out all day with you guys. You fill up the tiny places in my heart so that while, na- while nature did not allow me to become a mum, God knew and gifted me with a school full of amazing human beings for me to mother and fuss over instead. Okay, so those, enough of the sappy stuff. Okay, so those were lovely things to be thankful for, right? Um, there were lots of things in that list. There were some people and some activities. But I want to dive a little bit deeper on this. Uh, this whole thankfulness stuff is great, but I want to go further, and I want to look into something that I believe is far more powerful, and that's the concept of gratitude. So what is gratitude? Robert Emmons, perhaps the world's leading scientific expert on gratitude, argues that gratitude has two key components. First, he writes, it's an affirmation of goodness. We affirm that there are good things in the world, gifts and benefits that we've received. The second part of gratitude, he explains, we recognize that the sources of this goodness are outside of ourselves. We acknowledge that other people, or even higher powers, if you're on a spiritual mindset, give us many gifts, big and small, to help us achieve goodness in our lives. Emmons and other researchers see the social dimension as being especially important to gratitude. I see it, he says, I see it as a relationship-strengthening emotion because it requires us to see how we've been supported and affirmed by other people. Because gratitude encourages not only to appreciate gifts but to repay them or pay them forward, the sociologist George Simmel calls it the moral memory of mankind. Okay, that sounds pretty loaded, doesn't it? That's a pretty powerful statement. There's been recent research that suggests that people who are more grateful have higher levels of subjective well-being. Okay, so what does that actually mean? That sounds like a lot of hocus-pocus, right? Grateful people are happier, they're less depressed, they're less stressed, they're more satisfied with their lives and their social relationships. Hmm. Who would have thought that something so simple could have such a profound effect on our lives. Gratitude has been said to have uh, be one of the strongest links with mental health of any character trait. Numerous studies suggest that grateful people are more likely to have higher levels of happiness and lower levels of stress and depression. Okay, and like that's for free. <laughs> You don't have to go to a counselor. You don't have to take medication. You don't have to go to a special course for this. It's a freebie. You can do this for free and get all this benefit. Okay, so lovely, but is it for real? So this next little bit is for all the quantifiers in the house, those people that need empirical evidence to truly believe. Otherwise, you think this is all mumbo-jumbo, hocus-pocus stuff that your Grammy told you to do to be a better person, right? Well, it turns out that there is something to this gratitude stuff. So here are the top research-based reasons for practicing gratitude. Gratitude brings us happiness. Through research, um, uh, many scientists say that practicing gratitude has proven to be one of the most reliable methods to increase happiness and life satisfaction. It also boosts feelings of optimism, joy, pleasure, enthusiasm, and other positive emotions. On the flip side, gratitude also reduces anxiety and depression. (laughs) Gratitude is good for our bodies. Uh, Studies suggest that gratitude strengthens the immune system. It lowers your blood pressure. It reduces symptoms of illness. Uh, It makes us less bothered by aches and pains, teachers. That sounds like a sweet deal, doesn't it? Because I already flagged how old we are. Um, And it also encourages us to exercise more and take better care of our health. Grateful people sleep better. They get more hours of sleep each night. They spend less time awake before falling asleep and feel more refreshed upon awakening. So if you want to sleep more soundly, try counting your blessings instead of counting sheep or blue dogs, whatever. 
Um, gratitude makes us more resilient. Uh, in research, it's been found that it helps people recover from traumatic events, and they've done a study with Vietnam War veterans that are suffering from PTSD and have discovered that gratitude has made a significant difference for them. Gratitude strengthens relationships. It makes us feel closer and more committed to friends and romantic partners. What a cheesy line that is. I, I stole that from someone's research. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, whatever. When partners feel and express gratitude for each other, they become more satisfied with their relationship. Gratitude may also encourage a more equitable division of labor between partners. I'm going to use that at home. Gratitude promotes forgiveness. Gratitude makes us pay it forward. Grateful people are more helpful, altruistic, and compassionate. Gratitude is good for kids. When 10 to 19-year-olds practice gratitude, they report greater life satisfaction and more positive emotion, and they feel more connected to their community. Gratitude is good for schools. Studies suggest it makes students feel better about their school. It also makes teachers feel more satisfied and accomplished and less emotionally exhausted, possibly reducing teacher burnout. Not that that happens at Appleby. <clears throat> and again, it's free. It costs you nothing to do this. I don't know why we are not doing this all the time. We should be tripping over ourselves to share the love. Okay, so here's the stats that I really love to hear about. Even a single act of kindness can go a long way. Scientists studying positive psychology found that a one-time act of thoughtful gratitude, just once, produces an immediate 10% increase in happiness and a 35% reduction in depressive symptoms. We just saw an assembly on Monday that one in four female students and one in eight male students will suffer from depression. So we can do something about it today. The researchers have found that though the happy effects, dis though, the researchers, are, they've found though that the happy effects will disappear within three to six months though. So what this shows is that uh, gratitude is an act that should be repeated again and again. So. In the words of three wise sages who have also stood at this podium. Get busy and get connected. I truly believe everyone in this chapel can make a difference in the community through compassion and kindness. The secret of living is giving, especially in Thanksgiving. You heard that from them already in their chapel speeches. The message is the same. Although I would argue that Angelo said the words, but it was kind of his mom. But that's okay, Angelo. We'll take that one. Um, we like Angelo's mom. She's a wise woman. Um, in light of these motivational words today, we're going to start as a community on a journey of gratitude. Because I believe that gratitude is a way of being. So I have a challenge for you today in chapel that you can make a difference, a real difference by one simple act. So do not let me down because I will hunt you down and I will make you do this. All right? So what I'm going to ask you to do right now is I want you to think about a person here at Appleby that you are grateful for. This person it could be a roommate, it could be your coach, it could be your best friend. It could be Susie in the kitchen. Uh, it could be somebody who sat with you when you were alone or a student who thanked you for a lesson that you taught. So th start thinking about who that person is. And now I want you to write them a gratitude note. I want you to tell them why you're grateful for them. But listen closely though. I want you to talk about what they did to make a difference for you how they showed their goodness and how they helped you achieve your goodness in your life. Don't just write thanks. That's cheesy. But explain how they made you feel and in turn how that makes you feel about them. Okay?
There's enough at the back for those of you standing in the narthex to write your gratitude note as well. We're all in the game. Your post-it notes are stuck behind you on the bench, and there were pencils on your seat. Okay, so that's just part one of what I need you to do. Now I challenge you today or tomorrow, today or tomorrow, to find the person that you wrote your gratitude note to. And I don't want you to just hand them that note. I actually want you to stop and take the time and I want you to read that note to them. I want you to show them how you feel. Then you can give them the note. This is your pay it forward. And if you're like me, you might also want to give them a hug. Because let's face it, the world's much better if you give people hugs. Life is about relationships. It's about connecting. It's about giving and caring for each other. I've been at Appleby for 19 years, and that's for a good reason. This is an amazing place full of so much goodness. So my gratitude note is to all of you. Thank you for sharing yourselves and your goodness with me. You are all my inspiration, and each of you challenges me to be a better person. So now will you all rise and sing my favorite hymn, the hymn that was sung in this very chapel this past summer when I married my best friend, number 500.